Okay, so here we are with a demonstration of Synthesis Visual, which has to be the most fun piece of software you've ever owned. If for nothing else, just for the fun of it, this is going to be a blast and your favorite piece of software. Because whatever is in your brain, poof, you make an image out of it. So for instance, we go into Synthesis Visual right here. If you have other uh, products in the Synthesis family of products, they may be showing up on this screen, but you just click on this. Or you could go to the Synthesis visual menu on the top. Again, this may look a little different because I'm in the admin account right now and uh, I have everything in there. But Synthesis visual, this menu tab right there is what we will be dealing with. And the most important thing is the Imagine. So you do Synthesis Visual, you click on Imagine, and then boom, you are in and ready to make your masterpiece. Now you start on the left-hand side of this bar that you're looking at right here, and you have a choice. Now this is very artwork-oriented. So in other words, you don't have to limit it to photographs. You can also make all kinds of things like steampunk, uh, nature, fantasy, Anime even, sci-fi, tarot cards. You could even you could get all different kinds of things out of this software, including like busts of people's heads. I'll show you that later. We'll have fun with it. But, but right now, let's just do a general description, something really simple, and we won't concentrate too hard on the composition of what we call prompts. Prompts are the text that you put in and you prompt the software to actually spit out a result. So in this case, let's start with something really easy. So we'll do a uh, black Jeep, because I have a black Jeep, Wrangler. And I'm going to write, writing along the surface of the moon. And then we'll just click visualize. We won't deal with these two little buttons here yet. I'll show you those later. Let's just click visualize. And after a few seconds, usually it's only going to take 10 or 20 seconds then, boom, you're going to have an image based on what you put in. And there we go. We have four images to start, but you could keep hitting visualize until you get something that you like. And once you do get something like, that you like, like, for instance, this one right here, I particularly like that one better. You could click on it. You could save it to the gallery. You could download it to your computer. You can upscale it, which means you could make it large. You could make it between... 2 and 4K large, as a matter of fact. Very, very high resolution image. And the other thing that you could do is you could also put it in here. Now, you see this little box right here where it says upload? You could do several things in that box. But the first thing, the most basic thing you could do is you could take the image from down here. See this where it says create variations? You could click that, create variations, and get a little image of it right into there. And actually, now you could visualize it again, and you'll get things that are varied but more similar to that last image. So let's try that again. Okay, now if you look closely, these are all very similar images, but they have subtle differences. This one, the moon has a little bit of an atmosphere, and there is no mountains in the background. This one all the way on the right has mountains in the background, also a little bit of an atmosphere. This one has no atmosphere, and it just has some waviness in the background. So that's what, I'm, what I mean as an example. Now, there's something else that we can do with this little square right here. And I'll show you more about that later because now we could take this off and we could actually upload an image if we wanted in there. But let me go to the next example first before I play more with that and before I go to the magic wand, which is over there. The next thing is let's put a young Latina girl with a flowered headband. Again, we're keeping it rather simple here. Okay, so in this case, um, I'm looking at it, and I like the one on the right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save that to the gallery, but then the others, the eyes I'm not thrilled with, so I'm going to click Visualize again and shoot for some more where more of the headband shows up. 
Now, please note that you have unlimited credits. We decided to price this just right so that we'd be able to give you an unlimited amount of usage of this so that you could keep trying over and over again until you get images that you're satisfied with. And as you could see, there's some good ones that are popping out here. Some that aren't as good, some that are. So in this case, for instance, I kind of like this one, still not enough headband, so I just click visualize again, and I'll try one more time. Okay, this time I got a result that I like. It's this one right here, the second one. This is what I was shooting for, so I could download the image. I could actually add it to here like I showed you before with this little icon right there, and then we could do similar images to this. Or I can actually click Save to Gallery. So I'm going to save it to the gallery, and I'm all set with that. Let's take it one step farther. All right, now I'm getting more descriptive. In this case, I kept it as a photograph. Um, I wrote a cat sitting on a beach in a storm looking at the mountains. Even though I wrote photo, notice it tries to bend towards artwork sometimes. And we want to kind of change that. We also want to change the color of the cat because I didn't specify the color of the cat. So if I go to upload right here, that little square once again, I love that square because you could change your images that way. Um, I'm going to the desktop and I'm going to look for a cat. This is actually a cat image I found online because it's a calico cat. And now that I have the calico cat in there, I'm going to try and try to change the actual coloring of the cat. So I'm going to visualize that again and uh, try to hone in more on what I'm looking for in terms of the color of the cat without actually having to write uh, orange and black and white. I could do that and it would work, but sometimes a picture is worth a thousand words and that's going to help to mold the final result in the direction that I want. Okay, and as you can see, now our cat has more proper coloring based on what we fed in. Not all of them came out with the new coloring that I was looking for, but we have at least one that we could work with and we could base further images off of this. Or we could continue to hone it in with more descriptions, like I could put a calico cat right there sitting on a beach in a storm looking at the mountains and it will give me a different kind of result. And there you can see how we've changed the coloring of all the cats just by putting a calico, a calico cat in uh, to our description at the top. All right, now I want to move on to something very interesting, and that is serving the various niches. Um, for instance, if you were to just write a lawyer in a courtroom... It's not very descriptive. We didn't describe what his age is. We didn't describe what color hair he has, what color eyes, if he's holding anything. So it's going to do its best by taking a look at other lawyers from the past um, in terms of its database. And it's going to just conjure up its best guess as to what we want. Now I'm going to show you how to hone in on the things that we want with our magic wand. And I also will tell you that we have training that Paula Conti and I did that's two hours long that explains exactly how to actually structure those prompts. Now, I didn't say if it was a male attorney or female attorney. On the right-hand side, we have a female attorney. Um, I could use that. And uh, if I was to use that one, and let's say put that one in that little box there and then take variations, we'd get more female attorneys by visualizing again until we hone in on something that we like. So now we have a variation on the different lawyers, um, all female, based on what we put in the box. You could also click on Enhance Face and you will get an even more detailed facial features in some of these, and that's because our own software, our other software such as FaceSwap that we've sold previously, um, had those features built in. We're actually able to get higher resolution faces. So if you do have people, it doesn't hurt. In fact, it's probably always a good idea to click on this where it says Enhance Face. And yes, indeed, Enhance Face is included with this software. Everything I'm showing you is included. The next thing I wanted to show you was this feature right here, the magic wand as I call it, which basically helps you create prompts 
sophisticated ones without having to remember too much. For instance, the way a prop should be worded is the subject first, then the type of art that it is, perhaps the artist that would have actually done it, and then various descriptors such as the setting, um, perhaps uh, what the color of the hair is, what the person is holding, that sort of thing. But if you actually click on this right here, it helps you with that. For instance, the first thing here is image object. So we could say, um, let's do a um, bowl of fruit sitting on a table. And the artist, in this case, let's do... <laughs> I wonder what Andy Warhol would do with that. Uh, let's do <laughs> someone that might do some fruit. Uh, I don't think Picasso would do fruit. Um, let's pick somebody I have no idea who they are Roy Lichtenstein and the art style um do we want pop art abstract I guess abstract expressionism is what I'm looking for next for illustration let's see uh why don't we do something fun like a coloring book or something let me see what we have here watercolor pencil sketch comic book art that sounds good uh then the lighting we could do something like um cinematic color colorful in this case and camera doesn't really apply, but we could have done on a, a realistic photograph, we could have done like a telephoto shot or a drone shot, low angle, high angle, Dutch angle, which I knew what it was a week ago and I forgot already, that kind of thing. But let's just uh, leave it as, well, I guess we could actually do it from a low angle in this case, okay? And we're going to use this and now visualize and let's see what we come up with. Wow, that's crazy. There's the artwork right there. And we produced that. And of course, we could visualize it again if we're not satisfied with anything that's come out. But that's based, this artwork is based on what we put in with our magic wand. Now, one thing you can do is you could click on these images like this. And then you have choices of what to do. You could save it to the gallery, you could download it, or you can upscale it. If you do upscale it, it will make a very large picture out of it. It comes out between 2 and 4K, as I mentioned before, depending on what was input into it. The next thing I want to show you is that you have a choice here to download your image as well, or you could save it to the gallery. Or as I showed you before, this middle icon is going to put it up in the box over here so you could create variations. But in this case, what I want to do is I want to save it to the gallery. Then I want to go to the gallery by clicking on Synthesis Visual, scrolling down to Gallery. And then I want to take one of these images and I want to show you more about what you can do with them. So let's take the attorney, for instance. All right, so that's our attorney from before. She's working hard, and we have a choice to do several different things. We could change the background. Depending on how elaborate the background is, we could actually remove the background and put something else in. It isolated her pretty well. Now what we could do is we could just um, upload one of the standard backgrounds that we have, or better than, or we'll put one of those standard backgrounds in just by clicking on it, or better yet, what we could do is we could even upload our own image or take from our own image uploads like we have right here and when we can include that as the background. By the way, you could save this. You could render and save that right there. Let's go back to our gallery. We're going to pick that image again. This time I wanted to point out you could upscale it as I mentioned before. You could download it. You could change the background. One other kind of quirky feature that you could do with your image is you could actually do what we call face swap. But what it does is allow you to do a simple blend with another face. So let's say this face is the wrong ethnicity. And even though you could just go back and you could write the correct ethnicity, let's just say you for fun, you want to just mix another face with it. Well, if you click on this, the face swap option, then you'll be able to do just that. You'll be able to go in immediately identifies the face and then you can pick one of the faces from the database uh, like this one I used before so it's showing up right off the bat and I can click on that or I could click on all right let's just choose that one 
So we're going to take these two faces and blend them together, and this face will actually change a little bit towards this one. So let's do that. We're going to click on Change Face. And here's the result. As you can see, we have changed the ethnicity, and we have actually clarified the face somewhat with that built-in enhancement feature that works automatically when you do a face swap. So there it is. We didn't even have to go back into the software and change the ethnicity. We were able to do it by picking somebody that we wanted to change the look towards. Now, Synthesis Visual has other dynamite features that are so much fun to play with. For instance, there's this. It's the Edit Image feature. Now, that allows you to actually take any image you want. Uh, in this case, I'm going to take a sculpture of um, actual Obama sculpture, and I'm going to change the head and I'm going to change it with Donald Trump's head. Now, how am I going to do that? Well, I just go to Restore right here. That's on the right. And I just am going to restore this portion of his head. I want to try to draw this as carefully as I can because um, I don't want to mess up Donald Trump's face when I draw it out. I want it to be as clean as possible. So I want to get the ears as best I can off. And there, we've got... The hair coming off now, and this ear, and his chin, and that should just about do it. I think I've got just about the whole face. And now what we're going to do is put in the prompt, or in other words, the text, Donald Trump, or head of Donald Trump, head of Donald Trump. And that should replace the head of Obama. And this is our new piece of art. Now, you get different variations of it every time you try it. For instance, earlier, let me see if I have it here. I got this variation, which is slightly different. And you could keep trying until there's something that you like. The next fun feature that I'm going to show you has some similarities to Edit Image. But now it's the third thing down on the menu, and it's called Remove AI Object. We could just drag any old image we want from anywhere on the web and uh, we could, of course, use ones that were produced already by our software, by Synthesis Visual. But in this case, what I want to do is go to my desktop, and I have an image that I tried this on earlier, and it works so well, I wanted to show it to you. There it is. There's a boy playing with a shovel, a pail and shovel, and off to the right here, you'll notice there's an object. It looks like a little rake in the sand. I want to just kind of highlight that rake and get it out of there so that it's just sand. So I highlighted it, now I'm letting go of my cursor, I'm letting go of my mouse. As soon as I let go, it starts to go to work, and now it has just replaced that with the sand. So as you can see, it actually got rid of that object, and you could do that for other things as well. The next thing I'm going to show you is mind-blowing, and it's unique to Synthesis Visual. It's actually producing prompts from images. So let's say you're on the web, and you're impressed with a certain image. We'll go back to this one in just a moment. Let's uh, actually take a different one for now, and I'll go back to this one. We're going to uh, do this, image to prompt. This is kind of like reverse phone lookup. We're going to grab the image first, and that's going to produce a prompt. All right, so let's pick this image right here. All right, so you can't really see that, but you will in a second. The image is of a castle. I actually saw this on iStock. I was very impressed with it. I didn't purchase it. I'm not going to use the image. I'm not going to publish the image. No one's going to see that image from iStock, but I want to know how that image was produced in terms of the prompt if I was to try to recreate it because I like the scene of a castle with mountains in the background and a snow-covered landscape. So let's see what it says. It says, a castle in the mountains covered in snow, stock photo, detailed matte painting by Werner tub key okay now we're going to copy that to the keyboard uh, excuse me to the clipboard and now let's go back to synthesis visual and imagine that same photo but this time we're going to use that prompt that it generated all right and we're going to visualize it and we will not get anything that could possibly be cited for copyright infringement because it's just the idea that was captured here in the prompt it's not the image itself. It's the idea of the image. Just as if it came from your brain, it's coming from the AI's brain thinking, hey, that photo kind of looks like this. I'm going to try to recreate that image now 
from scratch. Totally unique. And you'll see it will look significantly different. It won't look at all like the original, but it will have the same players. It will have the castle. It will have the snow-covered mountains, as you could see. It has the um, same evergreen-type things in the front on many of these. Uh, you know, this is, this is amazing that this can do this, that you can take an image and have those features captured and then recreate the image like this. And if you don't like these... I'm going to save this one right here to the gallery. If you don't like these, all you have to do is go and then re do the do the prompt again. I mean, like for instance, I just clicked on this one and I said I'm going to save that to the gallery. I could also take this very image right here. I could click on the create variations. Remember what that does? That puts it up in the box right over here. And now I could visualize it again. And now look what we have. We have variations on that same original, and now we have a choice. And they're all based on the same prompt, but we've kind of honed in on what we want to see. And now we have something else that we could choose from. All right, so now I've saved the best for last. Let's say you are actually browsing across the web, and you see someone else's fantastic creation that they've produced with software that of course, is text to image, whether it's our software or somebody else's. Well, let's do that again. Let's go to image to prompt. Let's browse for an image. And I already gave you a little sneak preview of this. This is actually an artwork winner. Uh, this piece of art actually won in Colorado for the best piece of art in this particular art show. And it's still unclear to me, even after reading about this, whether it was fully disclosed ahead of time that this was not produced by a human being, but produced by AI. And it created this big uproar because artists are not happy that they could get replaced by AI. But let's say you're scrolling around the web, all right, and you see a picture like this and you say, gee, I want synthesis visual to produce something with some of these same elements well i just uploaded that into our reverse generator right remember what i did i did synthesis visual image to prompt and now i have a prompt right here a group of people standing in front of a giant circle of detailed matte painting by author pan cg society fantasy art reimagined by industrial light and magic matte painting cinematic lighting it has derived all that from the original that was already produced by somebody else's imagination and what he wrote. Now, we could take that prompt by copying it to the clipboard and we're going to go over to Imagine and we're going to actually post that right back in and you will see when I click on Visualize that we won't get quite that image at all, but we will get something that perhaps is going to be quite... quite creative let's put it that way quite imaginative quite interesting and quite artistic oh man i am so excited i've tried several times now and what i've done is i've gotten some great images i'll show you them uh first of all this is what i just got by putting that prompt in here and clicking on visualize i got this one i like a lot let me click on it you can take a look uh, as you could see, far different from the original, but still very artistic and sci-fi. Uh, this one as well. And if you think that we're kind of like stuck on one look here, we're not. And I'll show you as I go to Synthesis Visuals Gallery, uh, I will show you some of the other things that this same prompt came up with, like this. All right, now, is that crazy or what? I mean, it's not the same as the original, but very artistic coming up with a real true piece of art that is very, very unusual. Once again, it came up with this. I did two earlier today. Um, let's take a look at those. This one I was very impressed with. And this one. Again, all coming from a group of people standing in front of a giant uh, circle. And then it talks about being a matte painting by Arthur Pan and fantasy art, et cetera, et cetera. Hey, if it's in your imagination, you could create it. This scene you're seeing right here, that's from my head, something that I actually saw live in person when I woke up 
at a campground in 1975. It even got the 1970 Plymouth Fury correct. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration of the inside of Synthesis Visual. There's even more stuff in there, like the sketch feature, and there's more coming, which I'm not even allowed to talk about right now. I can't wait to see some of your creations.